I have always wanted to start a diatribe like this. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Mowage. Mowage is what brings us together today. That and watching Klingenschmidt and P-Robes completely lose their shit. It has been a fun weekend, hasn't it? You know, I have a Facebook profile under my real name, but I almost never go over. There's just too damn many religious bigots in my family, and it's all but impossible to scroll by some of this shit without formally disowning them. But this weekend... You can bet your ass I checked it out, and I reveled in their fever pitch of collective terror. The gazers coming for them, y'all. Already done took their bigot flag, and, and now with now they coming for their wedding vows. It's a hundred of my relatives angrily pounding at their keyboards while breathing into paper bags, tossing out predictions that would embarrass Chicken Little, frantically clutching their Bibles while lamenting the final nail in the coffin of civilization, completely, utterly, and absolutely freaking the fuck out. And I was happy to see that, but that is not why I was celebrating last weekend. Hell, before the weekend even officially started, I got invited to my first gay wedding. The, the couple that Lucinda was rooming with when I actually met her are the only friends that we have that have been in a relationship longer than we have. Uh, they called us Friday happier than I have ever seen them in the 20 years I've – well, it, we we did a lot of ecstasy together back in the day. So let's just say happiest I've heard them in a long time. So anyway, we got invited. I volunteered for maid of honor duties. My wife's pretty much a shoe in for best man, so it could be a lot of fun. But to be perfectly honest – that's not really why I was celebrating this weekend either. Yeah, you know, probably should be, but it isn't. I'm going to have plenty of time to celebrate with them when they actually tie the knot. No, this weekend, I was just celebrating the fact that we've wrestled yet another piece of our culture back out of the hands of a church that only had it because they stole it in the first place. We have liberated marriage despite their centuries-long effort to bolt it to the floor of their church. And right now, sure, they're still out there impotently waving their Bibles and screaming about the wrath of God and the impending brimstone the Supreme Court has condemned us to. But pretty soon, they're just going to be back home licking their wounds and gearing up for the next inevitable step towards egalitarianism that they can ineffectually oppose. Because, look, I mean, ultimately... This is a fairly small step. You know, I know it would seem a hell of a lot bigger to me if I'd been waiting for decades to walk down the aisle with the person I love. But one way or the other, we certainly didn't win the war on Friday. You know, the couple that invited us to their wedding, for example, they were ecstatic, but they were still weighing their decision to get married against the problems that could arise from making their gayness a matter of public record. You know, because in the state of Georgia, it's still legal to fire somebody for being gay. It's legal to discriminate against gays in all kinds of ways here. And while we're on the subject... Seems like the L, the G, and the B are outpacing the T a bit of late, and all these derogatory bathroom bounty laws and shit have yet to be adjudicated. So yeah, there's a lot to celebrate, but we're still an embarrassing ways from equality. And it's downright shameful how slowly we're moving. We should kind of do this all at once, shouldn't we? But look, for, for those of us that are going to be basically unaffected by the legality of gay marriage, this is still a damn significant symbolic step, because look what really happened here. You know, Christianity basically gave this one everything they had. They passed laws, they passed amendments to state constitutions, they poured money into ballot initiatives, they bought politicians, they bought bureaucrats, they bought judges, they spoke with a damn near unified voice. They made threats, they filed lawsuits, they screamed from every microphone and pulpit that they had, and they lost. They employed every scrap of social influence at their disposal, and they could not move the needle. They drew their line in the sand, we crossed it, and they had no choice but to retreat. Think about it. The last time they dug in their heels this deep, we had to fight a war that cost more than half a million American lives. This time, we just pushed them over. You know, we've seen this shift coming for years, of course, but we've always had to temper the demographics by reminding ourselves that the nuns aren't atheists. You know, when we see these radical increases in the non-religious, we say, yeah, but those spiritual but non-religious fuckers, they're, they're not on the right track exactly. They're still really annoying. But for religion to lose its power, we don't need a huge number of atheists necessarily. People who believe in some ill-defined, semi-tangible, pseudo-pantheistic, Akashic connection nonsense, they can't be rallied from the pulpit. You know, sure, they'll fuck up laws about the regulation of herbal supplements or something, but the anti-abortion, anti-contraception, anti-gay, anti-progress platform of the church is fatally ill – and the gay marriage decision last week was the x-ray that revealed the tumor. And it isn't just me that sees it that way, by the way. The Christians see that too, and that's what they're freaking out about. Look, as many others have pointed out before me, if this was really about the biblical definition of marriage, they'd be way more pissed off about divorce and people marrying foreigners. So clearly this isn't motivated by their devotion to the literal word of the Bible. All of their efforts against marriage equality have been entirely motivated by bigotry, but their lamentations now are about a lot more.
You know, yes, they are saddened by the fact that those damn Sodomites get to eat cakes like normal people and stuff, but they've got a lot more to bemoan than that. Without their ability to affect social change, the church is nothing. Without their ability to author social norms, they're basically a book club for Alzheimer's patients. They're the fucking Rotary Club. They're a bunch of bitter old men yelling about how much better the marriage was back in their day. And I will drink to that. <laughs>